Blago should be set free immediately. And so should Illinois Governor George Ryan and all of the other politicians who were put away by prosecutors who could be accused of having political motives. Ever heard of Watergate? Did the investigators not have political agendas? Here's the question I wish the media would answer. Does it matter at all if President Barack Obama is a fraud? It appears from the media that supposedly serve the public, like the Associated Press, that regardless of any evidence that is presented, they frankly don't care about the answer to that simple question. Because if they do answer yes, then how can they write so-called news reports about the results of an investigation that concluded with probable cause that the Selective Service Card and the long-form birth certificate provided by the White House were in fact fraudulent? The news articles fed to Americans like me ignored the facts presented relating to the question of fraud and focused solely on the supposed motives of Sheriff Joe Arpaio. This ought to raise the ire of all Americans. Unless that is, their answer to that question is, I don't care if he's a fraud. My name is Steve Beeman. I am a normal American who was only tangentially in politics until recently. I rarely care about this type of nonsense, but this issue has brought the possibility of the biggest scam of my lifetime to the forefront of my mind. And I can only hope and pray that it will also come to the forefront of the minds of millions of middle-of-the-road Americans. I have no political motives. I don't want to or ever intend to run for office, period. But to quote Howard Beale in the movie Network, I am mad as H, and I'm not going to take it anymore. In a recent Associated Press report, written after the sheriff's press conference that laid out the results and findings of a six-month investigation using credible law enforcement professionals, the AP reported that the investigators declined to offer clues about what the investigation had found. This is a complete lie. I don't know what else to call it. The press conference devoted enormous amounts of time to presenting the investigation's findings. For the AP reported to say this, suggests that either they weren't present and therefore they shouldn't be reporting at all, or they quite simply are just so biased that they don't care what the facts are. They just care about sharing their agenda with the American people. I resent this. The other news report that caught my eye was a CBS report that stated Arpaio's press conference puts him in league with the birthers, the conspiracy theorists who claim against overwhelming evidence. The problem with this is simply that the evidence suggests the exact opposite of their report. The evidence presented by Sheriff Arpaio and Mike Zullo, the chief investigator, led to the conclusion that probable cause did exist to believe that a crime had been committed. Here the CBS report is completely misleading the American people. This would be akin to Walter Cronkite, the legendary CBS anchorman, reporting that the reports of Woodward and Bernstein put them in the league of those Watergate conspiracy theorists, despite overwhelming evidence that the president is innocent. How can they possibly stand by this except to explain it by saying they so support President Obama that regardless of the facts, they won't report against him? Our republic is a fragile thing. I believe it was Ben Franklin who said when asked what form of government they had bestowed upon the American people, a republic if you can keep it. In order to sustain the freedoms guaranteed to us, we need several things, among which are leaders who accept the responsibility out of duty, not out of a selfish desire for power, and a news media which truly serves as the fourth estate. Who really can hold these political power brokers accountable for their actions, if not the media? I was young during the Watergate era. And even though I was generally a fan of the president, I was also thankful that the press had the courage to stand up and air the truth about the abuses of power that were taking place. Where has this courage gone? What are they so afraid of? Where are all the people today who are so afraid of Richard Nixon's imperial presidency? Like most Americans, I do not look forward to the political chaos caused by shining the light on massive problems that take place in our nation's capital. I would rather that the leaders who we elect play straight and by the rules, although I do suspect that's simply too much to ask. When they do step out of line, though, I hope that the news media shines a light on their issues, regardless of the political persuasion of the person involved. I am not out to get our president. 
Frankly, while I completely disagree with his policies and think he needs my financial literacy training worse than most, I more agree with our Constitution, which gives people the right to elect our president, for better or worse. I'm reminded of an old guy in Iowa who was known to be anything but a fan of Richard Nixon. Nonetheless, he had a picture of the president in his house, and when asked about it, he replied, While I don't support Richard Nixon, I do support the presidency. I tend to agree with that wise statement. But with that said, middle America, meaning those of us who do not live off of political ideology on the right or on the left, assume that eventually corruption that takes place will be outed by our news media. And that puts a final check and balance on our three-tiered political system. However, the reporting of this press conference, a press conference in which a duly elected sheriff, using his authorized law enforcement power, displayed evidence that showed probable cause that a crime of massive proportion has been committed, has been less than courageous. The media generally has handled it with purely political coverage, reminiscent of Castro's Cuba, complete with lies and character assassination of dissenters. With so-called news coverage like this, is it any wonder why the newspaper industry is currently the most depressed industry in America? Well, where do we go from there? I, for one, think we're moving toward true tyranny, a tyranny in which our political class does whatever it wants, whenever it wants to, and the people, that's you and me, are stuck paying for it, abiding in its rules, and ultimately living in servitude. I guess Howard Beale and I, and millions of Americans, share a great deal when we can say, I am mad as H, and I'm not going to take it anymore. The preceding video was written by Steve Beeman of the Steve Beeman Group. You may visit Steve's website at www.thestevebeemangroup.com.